Thomas. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I greet you with the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Last week, a young man from the local mosque where I worship uh, attempted to visit his parents in Somalia. Uh, he was denied the right to travel from Gatwick. His lap laptop was taken away from him and later returned and the airlines called him subsequently and said you could travel. Well, he did travel yesterday, got as far as Djibouti and was returned this morning from Djibouti. Uh, this is not uh, unique. Just one month ago, the story broke about the Camden Five, many of whom, all of whom rather, were intimidated, coerced, and blackmailed into cooperation, collaboration, I should say, with the security services. Now, what happened if this young man wanted to visit his six, par six parents to help them in one way or another? I know him personally. I've worked with him for years. I've worked with him for more than 10 years. What happened if he wanted to visit them if they are ill? And how many are there like him who suffer a similar feat? Uh, the truth is, uh, this, this campaign, this heightened campaign against Muslims under the guise of security has turned out to be one of the most lucrative businesses in our community today. If anyone wants to become rich, if anyone wants to have fame, a shortcut to fame, then he jumps on the bagan of Islamophobia. He has to milk the gravy train and position himself, whether as an expert, whether as a member of a think tank, or any other. Many who have attacked the community over the last nine years, they have turned out to be political charlatans. They've been lecturing us how to be good citizens. They were the ones who were defrauding the system, flipping homes, and doing everything to further their personal gains. The fact is, what we are seeing is in many respects payback for what happened in Gaza. The whole controversy about the Burqa in, in France is related to the fact that the Muslim organization, which Sarkozy himself, when he was Minister of Interior, uh, facilitated uh, its registration in France, that organization was against the war in Gaza. And it is for this reason Sarkozy has turned his back on them now today. It's payback time, not only in Paris, but in London and in many other communities across Europe because of the war in Gaza. There's no doubt that Islamophobia has gone beyond the pale of verbal abuse. Media rhetoric is now manifesting itself in, in attacks on our persons, on our properties. The stop and search campaign has grown by over 200% in the last two years. The control orders remain in force. Many individuals are bounded in their homes through secret evidence, through the use of secret evidence only recently overturned in a court of law. And what we have, our foreign secretary refuses to go before a, a joint uh, party, parliamentary commission on human rights. He refuses to give evidence there because he knows he will be exposed, you see, as one of those who collaborated with his former uh, leader, Tony Blair himself, who knew about all the torture who knew about the practices of rendition and secret prisons in Europe and elsewhere. He endorsed it. He was part of it. And it's all coming to light now. The whole issue of, 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 of intimidation of the young boys, uh, Frank Dobson, he wrote 
to Hazel Blair, to Jackie Smith in September last year, telling her about it. What did she do? Did she protect these young men from intimidation? She was busy doing other things. She and her cohorts, they were busy doing that, except to protect the Muslim community from harassment. Can we fix it? Of course we can. We can fix it by going beyond this, this narrative. That when you look at a Muslim, you see a potential terrorist. We want to turn this around. We want when you see a Muslim, you see a fellow citizen. You see a fellow human being. You see someone who has sick parents in, in, in Mogadishu, who wants to go and visit his sick, his sick parents, who has worked hard in London, and who wants to send money to support his sisters and cousins and nephews in, in another country. What is wrong with this? We want, when you see Muslims, you see someone like that, and you should support him, not to see a potential terrorist or bomber. And we can only turn this around by getting involved, by forging alliances with our colleagues in Stop the War and ensuring that this campaign grows from strength to strength. The whole purpose, as we've heard, of, of, of the campaign is to shut us out, shut the Muslims out, because they make you uncomfortable. They tell you about the foreign policy, the exposing human rights abuses, the war crimes. It's, it's not comfortable reading when you, when, you, when, you, when you read what the Muslims have to say about, about the wars, about the abuses, about Abu Ghraib, about Bagram, about Guantanamo, about, about Benjamin, uh, uh, Muhammad, who was tortured from Morocco to Guantanamo, from Bagram to Morocco to Guantanamo. They don't like to hear about this. So they want to shut us out, keep you silent. We will, we will continue to speak about this, you see, and become involved and to be part of a larger alliance to ensure that this message is, is, is brought forward. In other words, we will not be domesticated. We will, we will not think within the box. We will think outside of it, ensuring that we give an alternative and a narrative to what they are trying to tell us. Not, it is not just Muslims who, who are the victims of this. Be sure that you, non-Muslims, liberals, can be victims. Whoever thought that Jeremy Bowen will be, will be castigated by the BBC? Jeremy Bowen simply said that the settlements were illegal and he was taken to task by the BBC. So no one is immune. When you think outside of the box, when you criticize these policies, these abuses, you stand in, in the line of fire. And if we are not united, if we are not together in this campaign, Muslims as well as non-Muslims will be victims, will be silenced, will be harassed by this establishment. So from our own part, we will continue to be who we are. We will not be forced uh, to, uh, uh, to give up our faith. We will not be coerced into saying that we are secularist, democratic, non-violent, etc. We are Muslims, and that is it. We don't want to be categorized. We will reject every label. Extremists and moderates, we are simply Muslims. Don't try to categorize us. Don't tell us who we are. We will define ourselves. And finally, I say, that we will continue. One way to stop all of this is to support justice. Whether it is for Muslims or non-Muslims, if you stand for justice, we will ensure that there will be a fairer society, a society based on equality, based on equal opportunity for all. Thank you.